Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're playing Blockbuster Inc. today, where we get to make and manage our own movie studio. I believe we can even film some stuff ourselves. So what are we waiting for? New game! First things first, we need to name our studio. And you can just randomly have it make your own thing for you. But why do that when we can just come up with our own? Such as unwatchable garbage. Yeah! And we can choose what decade we want to start in. And we're gonna start as close to the modern era as we can. And down here we have some chosen stars genres and themes. I'm just gonna leave it on the defaults it gave me, which is the action and romance genres, and the themes are vampires in medieval times. Truly the most innovative. Ah, and here we are in our beautiful studio lot. Oh good, and our sign is here and everything. Soon everyone's gonna remember our movies. Or not, who cares? Anyway, whatever, it's time to build our studio. After all, these movies aren't gonna make themselves. And for that, we need to build some stuff. And thank goodness for this Sims-like familiar layout. Not even lying when I say this, I want some Something that's as easy as possible to understand. And we could go ahead and make these pre-made rooms because we're gonna need all this stuff like a producer's office and a writer's office. And then these two that are both grayed out, which are probably audio and art direction. But I guess the game is telling us we don't need those to have a successful movie. And honestly, it just keeps going. And again, we're not gonna use the pre-made ones because in my opinion, they're just way too small. But instead of doing that, let's just make one giant room. Yep, just like that. And I wonder if inside this one room, we can just nest in another room. <laughs> yep, it looks like we can. And then in that room, we're gonna place another room and another. Yep, looking good. And another really tiny room right there in the middle. Okay, our studio is off to a magnificent start. Basically, we're gonna make each one of these rooms something. Although first, we're gonna have to put some doors on these. Although maybe not that one. It just doesn't have the pizzazz we're looking for. Ooh, how about something like this? More glass on your door means you should be careful of the paparazzi. I mean, being able to see through the door is better, which means let's go ahead and do this one at the end because look at this all see through all the time that's definitely more of what we're looking for especially for what we're gonna make this outer ring of a room which is to say we're gonna decorate it for the bathroom so let's see let's take our one little bathroom stall put it as close to this door as we can yep just like that everyone will get to view you coming out of that bathroom even the cars can get in on the action and from adding that one thing when I mouse over that room a little toilet pops up now it knows what it is kind of and if I move one level deeper, it goes away to show that this room is not yet assigned and so on and so forth, which means I'm sure everything is working as intended. Anyway, back to the toilets. And honestly, let's try to make this bathroom setup as awkward as possible. Let's just use these stalls to make like a hallway. A hallway that's gonna help guide people to the next room. Yeah, so far so good. Tons of toilets, really tight corridors. I'm sure there's people out there that hate this, but I bet there's also someone out there that loves this. I know I do. And there we go. Okay, I think we've done it. We've gone ahead and filled up this entire space with a maze of toilets. So you enter the building through here, follow this narrow pathway against the wall all the way to the adjacent wall, and then you just zigzag back and forth, and so on and so forth. And then it takes you all the way around to this spot right here, which is where we're placing the door. Oh, and right next to it, the only sink in the entire bathroom. And now that we've put down the most important room, let's start on the next thing, which I think is gonna have to be the canteen, which it looks like the two things we need in here is a kitchen and a kitchen table. So we'll go ahead and take our one kitchen and put it as close to the door as we can. And for our glorious seating, we're gonna put that right about here. There we go. We're only gonna put the one table down. Talk about an effective use of the space. Oh, and we're also gonna give this room some exciting wallpaper. Ah, uh, yes, like these candy canes. Finally, something we can all enjoy all year round, whether we want to or not. Oh, and we can't forget about adding a nice clean floor tile. What a feast for the eyes. And moving on to the next room, which let's see, what do we think? Producer office? Nah. Writer office? Not yet. Ah, yes, there we go. Maintenance. We want these workers to feel well taken care of, and that's why we're gonna give them extra decorations. Oh, what the hey, why not a whole bunch of couches? And lastly, we have to give them some lockers. Otherwise, the game isn't gonna know that this is a maintenance room. Okay, and moving on. This next room, as we get closer to the center, that's where we're gonna put our writers. Wow, look how needy they are. They need four different things. Why do you need a writing desk? I thought that's what Starbucks was for. Whatever, we'll just put it right there. There. And they're gonna need whiteboards, so we'll go ahead and put those on the opposite side. Hopefully that makes them less useful. And lastly, some cabinets. Here's your small one, and also your big one. Intentionally facing out this way, the opposite of where the writer's desk is, so that if this writer needs to access them, they have to walk all the way around. And finally, we come to the producer's room, where some of the game's visual stuff is still waiting for them, like an ion cannon trying to hit them from space. Let's go ahead and put them under the weird beam thing. There we go, perfect. You and your suitcase full of money will be 
be very happy here. And then way in the back is where we're gonna put the rest of the stuff. Oh, and also nobody gets windows. You guys have to earn those with good movies. Oh, except the bathroom level. You guys get some windows. Because in the bathroom, it's always showtime. And now that our amazing studio is ready for prime time, we're gonna need to hire some people to run it. So let's get started. We've got stuff like actor, as well as director, as well as producer. Actually, you can just look at this list. That's all the things we have. And they all have like different talents and stuff. Like this sloth icon means that they're a slacker. Produces worse results at work. Well, that's the kind of go-getter attitude we're looking for. You're hired. Look at her. She already looks resentful to have a job. I mean, there's good traits too. Like someone could be laid back, which affects their happiness. But really what I'm looking for is only red. Like Raymond here, I think is going to be a great writer because he's a slow learner. And for Heath, this actor over here, you would think he'd be a great catch. You know, with the thing about being easily stressed and less happiness. But then I saw this big shiny gold icon. A-lister? Ugh, and this person's a B-lister. Oh, see, here's what I'm looking for. A nobody. Looks like you're also hired. I'm sure you'll be an amazing producer. Oh, and if we don't like our options here, I believe we have to wait until the next refresh, which is gonna happen in March 2010. And right now, it's only January 2010. That's okay, we have another option. It's called the character creator. And oh my goodness, look at this. We can create any kind of character we want. We can dress him up in any era of outfit we want. We can go for that more modern look, or less modern, or just straight vintage. But thank goodness they have so many styles of glasses already. The only factor that matters, different sweet shades. And I appreciate that there's sliders that we can use to establish how old or young they are. And we can choose their profession, but also we get to decide their skills? Like, I mean, why wouldn't you take their charisma and move it all the way to the top, as well as their athleticism, and just make them the perfect specimen? And we could also make their fame super high to be a superstar, and choose nothing but positive traits. All that matters is they're perfect. For someone else, I mean. We won't be doing any of that. If we're gonna create our own actors, we're gonna give them as many disadvantages as possible. So this guy's gonna be a couch potato and have less athletic skill, and he's gonna have a lower chance to perform well on stunts, and he's unpopular, and he's a slow learner. Not to mention that athleticism is down in the tubes at an actual solid zero. And we'll be a little bit gracious. We'll take his charisma and make it a solid two, just to mix it up a little. And of course, they're not gonna be 20. They're gonna be 60. There you are, my silver fox. And while we're at it, let's change that name. You're no longer whatever that said before. Now your name is first name ready, last name to suck. And they said the perfect actor doesn't exist. Look at that, looking great. Why would we go with boring old popular Heath at $14,000 when we can go with ready to suck, age 60, $997. That's over 14 times cheaper. What a savings. And while I was in the character creator, I might've made a couple more characters. After all, we have a lot of roles we need to fill. So I would like to introduce you to our new writer, actually illiterate, age 20, another bargain deal. Not to mention our newest director, Forever Singleton, age 20. In fact, you may notice something of a trend. If they're an actor, I've made them 60. Every single one of them. If they're any other position at all, all of them are 20 years old. So we can touch upon both corners of incompetence. Ah, and I see a bus is arriving. Oh good, and here comes everybody. Getting off the bus to come work. I'm not sure why the bus dropped you off at one in the morning, but who am I to judge, I guess. I'm kind of curious what happens now. At the moment, they appear to just be socializing and wandering around. Because I guess what else can you do at two in the morning? Okay, let's go ahead and speed up time and see if we can make this a little bit better. Oh good, it's starting to rain too. Nope, never mind. As quickly as it came, it's gone. The good news is someone's finally going to work. Or is off to take a crap. I guess we're gonna find out. Nope, never mind. False alarm. I did notice something suspect. I think the game has decided to hide some of my items. Like, I'm pretty sure that there used to be a toilet right here. See, there it is. I knew I wouldn't leave a gap like that. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure I put a kitchen right here. Yeah, like that one. Literally that one. And if I try to come back here and place another kitchen, it says objects are intersecting. I assume because the ghost kitchen is actually still there. But if we take this and move it over to the side of it, well, that works just fine. Same deal with the toilets. I can no longer place one right here. That's fine. We'll just place a wall right there. You made me do this. Also, it looks like our people are having food needs. Up to and including a bunch of people that were just using the bathroom, I guess. You know, the person to blame is this guy right here. He could do his part and actually do some cooking, or he could just wander around and socialize. I thought maybe I had some control over what they do, but when you click on him, it just brings up this menu, and then I see him doing nothing but wandering around and complaining some more. Come on, sir, it's up to you to... <laughs> 
Or you could just fall over. Oh, and you're back up again. Maybe you should have been an actor. Well, I guess they're just gonna stand around in the nighttime and complain about needing to sleep and how hungry they are. And occasionally they all teleport into the stalls to take dumps simultaneously. Okay, so they've been milling around for a while, not doing anything to help themselves. We've got this maintenance worker that's perpetually stuck between these two toilet hallways. We've also got this other 20 year old stuck at the end of the hall. You know what it is? They probably just need something to do. So let's get ready to make our next big project. And that's putting down a movie set. We're gonna go with the super basic default one for now. There we go. Ah, yes, perfect. Only the best weird, awkward medieval set for us. With the most amazing up-to-date equipment. And to go with that, it's time to enter product creation. Here's where we get to customize the kind of movie we're making. And yeah, you can randomize and get all kinds of things that sound like actual movie titles. But we'll come up with something more appropriate. But first, let's choose our product type. For now, it's just gonna be a movie. Of which it's gonna be a low-budget one. Because that's all we're trusted with for now. For genre, we're going with romance. And for theme, we're going with vampire. And I guess because we haven't researched it yet, we can only do G-rated movies. Ah, uh, yes, a low-budget vampire romance movie for all audiences, starring only geriatrics. That won't be awkward at all. And to go along with that G-rating, we're gonna have no lore, no dialogue, no story, atmosphere, or conflict, or suspense, but all the gore in the world, and tons of hardcore intimacy. And now for the name of our movie. Violent Geriatrics Hugging and Kissing. Oh, I can't fit any more letters. Well, just for consistency then, we better take off this G too. Yes, there we go. Violent geriatrics hugging and kissing. Fun for all ages. And now on to scenes and sets. We get to choose a bunch of filming locations. Choose set. Our glorious default set. Followed by our next amazing set, the default set again. And then to round out this masterpiece, the default set. And just to spice it up, how many extra scenes can we add? Oh wow, we can add quite a few, can't we? Wait, is there actually a limit to how many scenes we can do in this? Oh, that sounds getting kind of crunchy. But let's not let that stop us. Oh, the game froze. Well, that'll teach me. Okay, wait, I think I found the problem. It turns out when you add too many scenes, the game wants to have a little more RAM. And by a little, I mean a lot. And by a lot, I mean nearly all of it. Game, I appreciate your efforts to try to get upwards of 55 gigs of RAM. But look, we don't have to do it this way. I'll just add less scenes. Let's just go with a mere 50 instead. Which, of course, now I have to go to each and every one of these and choose the right set. And done. Oh, and if we're gonna do that, we have to add some extra stunt scenes. I guess I didn't learn my lesson the first time, did I? And each one of them has a negative modifier, it looks like. Because for one, we don't have a stunt person. And on top of that, our actors are basically incapable of everything. But hey, how can you go wrong with 30 stunts in one movie? All that for $50,000. And I was gonna move on to post-production, but I can't actually click on that yet. I guess we just release it immediately after filming. Works for me. Create product. And the movie process begins. As you can see, the screenplay is already underway. Ah, and our first roadblock. We need to have violent geriatrics hugging and kissing ready by the end of the week. There's no script to work with. A voice responded from the crowd. I can't do it, actually says. And don't forget, this is the person we hired to do our writing. First name, actually. Last name, illiterate. And we have three choices. We can go with this nice approach. You need to take a break. It's all right. We'll get back to it tomorrow. Except we're not going to. Nor are we going to do take your time and deliver a good result. We're going to go with the high pressure answer. Everyone is waiting for you out there. Get a hold of yourself and give us a script that we can work with. I know you're only 20 and I don't care. See, there we go. That's all it took. She managed to get a script done, but at the cost of a lingering anxiety that will be hard to recover from. I'm sure she's fine. Also, how did you even get in here? Ah, oh, and here we go. Filming is about to begin. Just get in there and do your 50 plus scenes of hugging and kissing. And no, I don't care if all of you are hungry and tired. So they've been standing here all day and all night doing no filming. What's the problem? Oh, wait, there's like a thing up here. Waiting for crew. Oh, whoops. My fault. Well, our actors are here, as is the director. Well, where the heck is our crew guy? Oh, Oh, silly me, I forgot to hire one. No problem. I made this guy to be our crew person. Behold, accident prone. Ah, another midnight delivery, I see. Where our guy gets dropped off on set in the cover of darkness. Finally, we can get this show on the road at one in the morning. I'm sure this feels optimal for everybody. And now for the riveting filming of everybody standing around, gesturing wildly with their arms. While the director sits and does nothing, this guy figures out how to use a camera for the first time. But whatever, this film is getting made at a breakneck pace. 
this. And you can tell this camera guy is fitting in because he just had his moment where he had the vapors. And apparently that's how movies are made. And done. Congratulations, actors. This calls for swimming in the floor. Oh my goodness, the film has come out and we've achieved a beautiful 28 and so many memorable quotes. An insult to the film industry. A mockery of an attempt. It makes you wonder if they did it on purpose. Oh, reviewers, you can see right through me. And then if we look over here at ticket sales, we sold 3,828 tickets. Oh my god, we can actually watch the movie. Oh wow, look at that. It starts with the title screen and the credits and everything. Ah, yes. Look at this cinematic masterpiece. One camera angle played over and over again of three actors wildly gesticulating, of which one of them we can't even see their face. And then about halfway through, something changes. Oh, I guess this must be all the stunts we did. I'm glad it's the same one stunt over and over and over again. Honestly, I can kind of understand how about 3,000 people would tolerate this. It has just the right amount of art factor. You may also notice that our expenses tally up to $67,800. We didn't lose all that money, though. Due to our stellar ticket sales, we only lost $6,500. But I bet we can make up that difference after we head on over here to the research button and go all in on technology. We can go from our crappy 1900s camera camera all the way up to something a little more today. Oh geez, this thing takes 3,040,000 research points. But never fear, we appear to have 8,295,000 research points. How or why? Don't know, don't care. All I know is we're buying this camera. And to go along with this, we'll go with the nicest 2010 lighting. Yes, good, great. And I would go with this really expensive microphone, but we don't have enough RP for it. We're just not gonna have a microphone at all. Because now I realize we could spend that money on something else, like fire effects. Yes, please. This is also the place we unlock a bunch of other things we probably care about, like being able to produce a TV show, not to mention being able to do bigger and bigger budgets. So we're just going to unlock all of these. Ooh, and we can also unlock different ratings and genres. Well, just so we have them, we'll unlock all the ratings. You never really know when you're going to be inspired to make an NC-17 movie. And we'll also unlock all the genres, so we have plenty of choices moving forward. Oh, geriatric movie update. For whatever reason, I didn't realize we'd have a second month of sales. Now we've made money on off this monstrosity. A whole $10,000. Well, now I'm curious how long this will go. If we just let the months pass by, which by the way, I don't know what this anything even means. Oh, it's scheduling. Is that why no one's eating? Like if I just select eat and tell them right now is the time to do that. Oh, there he goes. Expertly staring at the grill like it's his first time seeing it. Because let's be honest, it probably is. Uh-oh, actually illiterate is unable to reach a canteen table. Well, you're just gonna have to learn to share. We only have the one. What if I just tell you to work all 24 hours of the day? Well, it turns out switching everyone to do work only appears to be no different than leaving it on anything. I mean, that's fine. We'll just leave it on work all the time then. And month number three, we made another 4.9 thousand for a total profit of 15. And month number four has shown even more profits. I'm not gonna say no to that extra cash. Oh no, what's this? Illegal poaching! Ready to suck walks in with an envelope in hand. The logo of Artsy Pictures is visible in the upper left corner. They made me an offer after watching me in violent geriatrics hugging and kissing. I'm afraid I have to take their offer unless there's a way to match their salary. And sure, I could match their salary, but I don't think so. You can go if you want. No, no, I only wanted it as leverage. I'll stick around with my current salary. Yeah, that'll teach you. Never try that again. In fact, where are you? There you are. Merging with the director, I see. Well, hold still. I want to talk to you. Ready to suck? Get ready to be fired. And now that we've done that, let's go back over to hire employees and let's hire him back. Well, well, look who's come crawling back. I hope we learned our lesson this time. Oh, and check this out. This year's Filmwood Awards ceremony is about to begin. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Any award could go to us. Except Best Director, because we weren't nominated. Or Best Producer, where we also weren't nominated. Or Best TV Actress, where there was only one nomination at all. I'm so confused. Oh, finally we're nominated for something. Best Looking Studio. <laughs> and we won! For well-maintained lots, tasteful decorations, and tidiness everywhere. Who wouldn't want to work here? And I must say, I'm not surprise given how amazing our studio looks. Well, for our win, we apparently get a thousand studio fans and plus one employee happiness. Wow, look at them now. Their happiness is off the charts. Well, now I feel extra motivated to begin our next big classic. Let's get started. And we're gonna play it kind of safe this time with another romance, except this one's gonna be an alien romance. Age focus, <laughs> rated R. And let's see, this time let's go all lore, no dialogue, no story, 
no atmosphere, all conflict, no suspense, no gore, and no intimacy. I think we've created the most boring looking movie of all time. Alien geriatrics crying over books. And this time we're gonna go with just the three scenes, which are still decorated for a vampire theme. And what the heck, let's add a stunt scene. Wait a minute, what does it mean to direct the scene? It's exactly what you think it would be. We get to direct this stunt. Okay, well let's see, instead of doing that jump, I think this alien love story calls for CPR. And we can't forget to add our practical effects. So let's see, what does fire do? Well, I don't really know what I was expecting. What about you guys? Can I, like, move you around? Oh, good, you really can. And you can rotate them into the fire. Now we're talking. And now if this wasn't good enough, now we can adjust the camera movement. So instead of a static, let's focus on our actors. Zoom in as far in as we can. Camera shake all the way to the most. And let's take that shake speed up as high as it'll let us go. Oh, boy, we're all gonna be sick. Well, if we're gonna finesse that stunt scene, we might as well direct the other scenes, too. So for scene number one. We're just gonna have one actor. We're gonna take and have them face the camera. Yeah, just like that. And then instead of standing and talking, we're gonna have them act out getting stabbed. Yeah, you're doing great. You absolutely look like you're getting stabbed. And then for camera movement, we're gonna kind of aim it down like this. And we're gonna zoom all the way in. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's the opening shot of our movie. And then moving on to scene number two, which is gonna feature Late Life McCrisis and Madam Has Been, where we're gonna have Madam Has Been doing the animation of Kissing Slow. Now get ready for your big scene of making out with this wall back here. Yes, there we go. <laughs> the scene is complete. And finally, we'll cap this off with scene three. We're gonna select gangster shooting for all three. So they're all irresponsibly firing guns on set, horrifically close to each other's faces. Okay, it's time to create that product. I don't know, say what you will, but I think this is gonna turn out to be a masterpiece. <laughs> we can already see how this awkward scene is going. And the reviews are in. Aw, yeah. An even lower score than before. But don't listen to the reviews. We have to see this masterpiece for ourselves. All right, hit us with the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they didn't like this? I mean, didn't you see the gun scene? And how could you not love this stunt? What a cinematic masterpiece. And unfortunately, our ticket sales weren't as good. So we lost some money and we got to turn this around. But in order to ensure that, we're going to go with the safe sequel. To geriatric, to kissing. But this time we're going to build a new set in the set designer. We're going to go with this Western theme because it has a balcony. And look at all the props we can add. So because it totally makes sense, we'll put a bank vault right there. And maybe some of these fancy candelabras. And some nice rugs to tie it all together. Oh god, it's so big. I don't know if this is gonna fit on our lot. Well, thank goodness we can expand for cheap. Okay, perfect, there we go. And that's where we're gonna film all of our scenes. Which, by the way, my disappointment has no boundaries. What's the point of having this balcony if I can't use it? Well, whatever then, front and center you go. I'm pretty sure none of this matters anyway. And now it's time to create that. Uh-oh, not enough money. Oh, I don't even have 50 grand, huh? Oh wow, that set was expensive. Now we only have $229. That's okay. That's what the bank is for. Specifically for giving us a loan. Oh boy, and me with a credit limit of a million dollars. Don't mind if I do. And now we're flush with cash. And now let's create it. Oh boy, how I can't wait for this cinematic masterpiece. Oh, and something else I noticed. I figured out where you can reshoot the scenes. So if I'm not happy with that 20% rating, I can just tell it to reshoot. Yeah, get up there. I expect you to do better this time. Okay, so I reshot them over and over and over again. And I'm pretty sure this is the best it's gonna get. It's now April 2013, and we've burned through almost all of our money. But I'm proud to say that 2G2K is finally releasing. Now all that's left for us to do is wait for the reviews to fly in. Oh boy, fingers crossed. <laughs> Zero? Really? What were all the reshoots for then? I did get 100% in scene retakes. That's gotta count for something. But it did have decent ticket sales, I guess. At 85,000. Although we're still in the hole 101,000. Okay, new strategy. Clearly reshoots are for suckers. So instead we're gonna do one last ditch effort. I'm gonna hit random a bunch of times. There, that's the movie we're going with. Sliders completely arbitrary. Only one actor to save money. Old harder. And now the absolute moment that this is done filming. Filming whatever the hell this is. The moment that progress bar hits 100, that film is finished and sent out to release. And with only $5 left in our bank account, this is our absolutely last chance to succeed. So let's hope we do okay. Yep, 26, tasteless and simply wrong. That's not the part I care about though. The part I care about is those day one sales. And wouldn't you know, 14,970 tickets sold. Our film is immediately profitable by $177,000. Oh good, look at that. We're 
cash positive again. Wait, so can I just do this every time? Like, if I just randomly assign everything. Wrinkles to die for. Will this speed build work every time? And done. And release. And crappy reviews. And ticket sales are enough where we still manage to turn a profit. Okay, I think I now understand how this game works. So here's what we're gonna do next. First, let's go ahead and expand our studio space. So pretty much as far as the game is gonna allow. Okay, great. Now we have a lot more space to work with. Now we're gonna take this crappy thing, move it out of the way. And now let's head over to this back corner right here. Head on over to sets. Grab the default one. And now it's time to build and build and so on and so forth. Okay, now we've got 27 additional sets to work with. Who cares that they're literally all identical? You can see where this is going, right? Well, momentarily anyway. We still don't have very much money. So let's make another crappy cash grab real fast. Oh, who am I kidding? They're all crappy cash grabs. And paid. Okay, now we have $110,000. Which means now we have enough money to do two low budget films. Although one problem we're gonna have is we only have one director. And that director's gonna need a camera guy too. No problem, it's hiring time. And I don't wanna pay high prices for all these overachievers still. That's okay, import character to the rescue. We can just add a clone of our director. See, there he is. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. And we're gonna do something kinda interesting here. We have Geriatric 6. And now for our next movie, we're just gonna do Geriatric 6 again. Although everything else will be totally random. This won't be confusing at all for audiences, right? Two movies with the same name coming out of the same studio. All of it by the same writer, but with completely different premises. Shot simultaneously, both of which are released on the same night. Ah, and here come the first reviews. Oh, I like this review. It's like they were so flabbergasted they didn't even leave a quote. And listen, if you didn't like this Geriatric 6, well then why not try this other Geriatric 6? What a score! Speaking of scores, I'm not gonna say no to these ticket sales. All I can tell you is we went from basically no money to 180000 which means we can hire more cheap clones. Now we can make three variations of the same movie back to back. So far, every time we release an onslaught of these failures, we basically double our money. And we also had to go and clone some of our actors, because now we have six of the same title in production. At this point, I'm not even looking at the scores. I'm just closing these as fast as I can. I don't care when I made a half million dollars all at once. Well, if six at once is good, then how about... Okay, here we are, still making movies. It's now February 2033, 18 years later, and we went from half a million dollars to 2.1 billion dollars. You might notice on the side here that we're up to Geriatric 24, where our movies now make like 10 million each on their first day, and we hired a whole bunch of additional clones, giving us a total of 80 employees, which, by the way, is the limit to how many employees we can have. I have to admit, though, the entire process is kind of a pain. We gotta set all this stuff, and then we have to choose one one of our director clones, and then the writer, and then we have to select one of our many misses failures, and it's not a lot of work to do once, but to do it over and over again, it's kinda labor intensive, and our first day ticket sales tend to be always around 10 million, and that's too predictable for me. Then I realize there's something over in research that might help us out, and that's the marketing office. Unlock the marketing menu where you can launch marketing campaigns to boost your products and stars. Sounds like it's worth a shot to me, and I created and hired a character named Crying Inside. That's how you know he works in marketing. So now I believe the next step is we need to get a movie in production. And then we head on over to this marketing button and looking at the different campaigns we can do we're gonna do billboard advertising because it has the widest range of plus 25 to 50% and create campaign. And now while this movie is off being filmed, crying inside is off. Actually he's just wandering around like everybody else. But it says he's doing stuff so I guess there you go. Okay here we go. The billboard advertising campaign concluded and added plus 100 hype. Well I don't really know what that means but I guess we'll We'll see if that mattered when it releases, which is if we made more than 10 million in the first day. Oh, wow, that really made a difference. Okay, wait, can we have more than one marketing guy? Yes, actually, it turns out you can hire as many people as there are desks. So now there's 12 desks in here, which means now we have 12 marketing guys. And get another movie in production. It's time for all 12 marketers to do their thing. I guess they do hang out in the office sometimes. Okay, and the campaign is complete, and now it's added 300 hype. No, wait, 525 hype. No, wait, 1,102 hype. 3,352? I guess I'll just wait till the rest pour in and we'll see where it lands. Okay, it looks like the final number is 196,672. I wasn't really paying attention, but it just clicked in my brain that the hype gain is a percentage, which I guess means it builds on itself, or so we'll see. Oh! Oh, wow, that's a lot of ticket sales. 1,955,776,647 tickets sold for how much in first day sales.
Oh, a mere $43 billion. Well, I think we found our strategy moving forward, and that's how we made over $100 billion. And lastly, let's head back to the bank. This time it's for studio shares. Here's our cash on hand versus everybody else. Our $115 billion against everybody else's sad, sad amounts. So I have an idea. Let's just buy out everybody. Owning shares of another studio lets you receive part of its monthly profit, proportional to the amount of your shares. Oh, so you mean all of it across the board? Well, I guess we are the filmmaking business now, owning every single studio that exists. So I hope you had fun. I know I did. And I'm sure Mrs. Failure, now age 92, also did. And I'll see you next time.